Welcome everyone to this episode of Keto Chat. I'm here with wonderful people, Amy Berger, Dr. Eric Westman. Um, welcome everyone. They're here to talk about their brand new book that's coming out, End Your Carb Confusion. Uh, if you guys have been living under a rock and you don't know who these two people are, let me just read their bio for you. Oh, oops. Uh, let's see. I had that pulled up and then I close that out. Bear with me a moment here. Uh, okay, Dr. Eric Westman is an associate professor of medicine at Duke University. He's board certified in obesity medicine and internal medicine and founded the Duke Keto Medicine Clinic in 2006 after eight years of clinical research regarding low carbohydrate ketogenic diets. He is a past president and Master Fellow of the Obesity Medicine Association and Fellow of the Obesity Society. He is editor of the textbook, Obesity, Evaluation and Treatment Essentials, and he's co-author of the books, Cholesterol Clarity, Keto Clarity, and New York Times bestseller, The New Atkins for a New You. He's co-founder of Adapt, for, Adapt Your Life, an education and product company based on low carb concepts. You guys know who he is now, don't you? Welcome, Dr. Westman. Well, thank you. You know, after seeing your name for so long, Keto Carol, I changed the name of our clinic to the Keto Medicine Clinic. Oh, so great, great. I Well, uh, I'll send you the bill for the 10% on Keto <laughs> Royalty. Okay. I own that name, right? No. <laughs> so glad you're here. And then Amy Berger uh, is a U.S. Air Force veteran and certified nutrition specialist who specializes in helping people do keto without the crazy trademark. Uh, she has a master's degree in human nutrition, and I don't know why I put quotes on trademark. Anyways, TM. <laughs> um, master's degree in human nutrition and writes about a wide range of health and nutrition-related topics such as insulin, metabolism, weight loss, diabetes, thyroid function, and more. She has presented internationally on these issues and is author of The Alzheimer's Antidote and The Stall Slayer, Seven Roadblocks to Keto Fat Loss and What to Do, the, do About Them. Welcome, Amy Berger. Thank you. I'm, I'm more impressed that Dr. Westman is a master fellow of the obesity <laughs> society. I'm like, is there a special handshake? Like I'm, that's very, I'm not the master you. fellow of anything. It's I just read a blog. <laughs> that tripped me up a little bit too. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that designation. I, uh, the master fellow. So I imagine <laughs> you have like a, a, a sword or something they give you for that, right? <laughs> no, it, it just means you're old. <laughs> Uh, well, welcome. Thank you all for reaching out. Like, I was so excited to hear you guys have this new book coming out. So um, um, let's start out with like, you know, how did this, how this book even come to be? Sure. Well, you know, uh, um, gosh, how, how many years have we crossed paths, Carol? The cruises, the low carb Probably about meetings. four or five now, four like five, yeah. the first uh, low carb USA was, which was yeah four four five yeah. somewhere around there well you know so i've gotten to know a lot about keto diets use them in the clinic with people who have all sorts of diseases and and it's very very therapeutic i mean it's very effective and uh, but i've come to the realization that not everyone's gonna do it you know <laughs> including like my brother and my kids and so it, the thought occurred to me and to my partners with Adapt Your Life, that why don't we bring the knowledge that we've learned about carbs to people who wouldn't do keto, who, who wouldn't even think about it. I mean, give up uh, an apple or something, you know? Yes, you can have an apple and still achieve a lot of the benefits that you get by cutting carbs. And because there's so much confusion, I, I find that my clinic day is basically trying to get rid of all of the misconceptions mm. about what keto means. And so when I uh, learned about Amy Berger and her Alzheimer's Antidote book and the clear writing, you know, she's a professional writer, mm -hmm. and also that she had a keto without the crazy sort of mentality of trying to make things simple, you know, it was kind of a, it was natural. So I asked her to help me operationalize uh, the, the idea of telling people about what we know about sugar and carbs and, and that not everyone needs that. If your metabolism is suitable, you don't have to do keto, which might surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anything to add, Amy? Yeah. I mean, in, in my thinking, this book 
you know, like, like Dr. Westman was saying, we've all three of us have, have been at this keto thing and low carb thing for a number of years, Dr. Westman more than you or I, Carol, but you know, um, and we've seen it evolve from something that was pretty simple, you know, just, just don't eat a whole lot of carbohydrate and you're like 90% of, of the way to where you want to go. You know, that's the main thing you have to do. And over the last few years, it's become so complicated and so confused by all of this extra stuff that wasn't really part of the core message was just eat very little carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. Everything else is detail. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't, but the, the place to start is just cutting your carbs way back. And that signal has been lost in all of the noise. Mm -hmm. And so this book really, I think, quiets all that noise, gives you the main message and just takes, I mean, the best way for me to say it is this is the book I would want if I was new to all of this now, mm -hmm. because, you know, you can, the fact that this way of eating has become so popular is so great because there's so much more information about it than there ever was. But then there's also a lot of misinformation and a lot of stuff that's really high level and complicated that you don't even need to understand at all mm -hmm. to do the main thing and be successful. So, um, and, and Dr. Weston's being kind of too modest. The real story of how this actually evolved is he originally wanted to write a book that was like a 30 page, like a pamphlet that you could you pick up at an airport, you know, before COVID, like when people actually want on airplanes, that you could pick up at an airport bookstore, read on the flight, and by the time you landed, you could actually be ready to start keto. Like this little thing, but just here's what you need to do. And a publisher was like, nobody's gonna buy a 30 page book. Like what can we, can we do with something more? So we fleshed it out with a lot more stuff, but- um, Well, I think it'll have a broader appeal than the here, just do keto. Because, um, you know, for example, I have a brother who his life uh, has been full of carbs, but he was the one who was naturally active and played mm -hmm. basketball in high school and in college while I was, you know, studying books. And uh, but so there are individual differences that we hope to bring the knowledge that we've learned about low carb and keto to the other people that need it and, and wouldn't consider or maybe they would consider if they knew how easy it was mm. to do keto. And, and, you know, in my clinic, I have medical students and residents. And recently, the first patient I saw with one of the students, she came in and, and the patient said, uh, this is too easy. <laughs> I said, well, what do you mean? And because I don't, I'm not hungry. I don't have to think about what to eat. And also, some people are, are going to be surprised at how simple it really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so true. I, I get that my clients, here's what you do step by step. And they're like, this is so much easier than what I was trying before. Yeah. Everybody's got to make it so complicated out there. You don't need all the macro calculators. No. You don't, I, 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 you know, I got an early copy of your book and there's not one mention of macros in there. Uh, no calculators or percentages or anything crazy like that. So well, I think yeah. there is a mention of macro and we say, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we think don't worry about that. But I think, I mean, Dr. Weissman is right. It's not, it's not just a keto book. And I think that's where this is new to our space, so to speak. You know, it's honestly, as much as like all three of us, we make our careers out of this way of eating, but it would be frankly wrong, downright incorrect of us to say that like cantaloupe is poisoning you or, you know, sweet potatoes are killing you when there's billions of healthy people around the world that eat these foods and they're thin, they're healthy, they, they age with their faculties intact. And so our book kind of helps people find what is the carb level that's right for me? Because the truth is, a lot of people do need keto. There's a lot of people with type two diabetes and PCOS and hypoglycemia and all of these conditions that respond really well to keto. And then there's people who don't need to be quite so strict. And then, you know, we all know plenty of people too that maybe at one point were very sick or very, very overweight and did keto for a while, corrected all the issues and now what? Should they eat strict keto for the whole rest of their life? Or do they maybe now have a little more flexibility? So that's where this book, because I think in the keto world, we do, you know, unintentionally, we do people a disservice by making them really scared 
of foods that might be perfectly okay for them. You know, not not 400 grams of carbs a day, but maybe you can have a peach from the farmer's market in the middle of summer and it won't actually kill you. <laughs> I think, Amy, you're, you're, you are you're have a phrase and I don't know which food it is, but you say something about like, sweet potato, you know, eating sweet potatoes never made anybody overweight or, you know, that's not the problem. Yeah, I mean, nobody, nobody got diabetes from eating too much broccoli, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Right. So, well, you guys hinted on that. So let's just go there now. Like, so who is this book for? Who should, who should read this book? Well, we want it really to be for the general public, whether they're interested in, well, just someone who's interested in improving their health by addressing nutrition. And that's the main thing. We, we have a sound modulator, sort of like an amplifier with different dials, but we explain that the nutrition dial is what you got to really work on first. The other things usually come into play or come around on their own. But it's also good for a keto crowd who might be at a stall, who might not understand the original. This, you know, if you are in this world, it's more like the original Atkins induction or protein power, which is how we all learned this 20 years ago. And uh, so it's kind of a reminder, a refresher for people who are already in the world. And, and we don't do the food quality really. Um, that piece will say, you know, don't worry too much about it. It's great if you can. Um, and then don't over consume fats and oils, which are still, you know, problems I see today in people who are in this world, but not getting the results they want. Mm -hmm. You might even send it to a, a relative uh, who, who, you know, you might want to help influence who you know thinks keto is crazy, and this doesn't. It's not a you must do keto kind of book. Helps you figure out what would probably work. I think um, <laughs> to anyone watching this after it's recorded, we're recording on Saturday, November seventh. I think we are getting a tiny bit of the noise. There's some celebrating in uh, Dr. Westman's neighborhood. I think he lives on I'm a very street. That. I think we heard some car honking. Anyway, no, I agree. I, the book is for. I think they're celebrating the book. Yes. yes. Oh, so the, no, I mean, the, the book is for everybody, but I think it's for, you know, I, there's so many different audiences that I think would benefit from it. But the two that jump out to me the most are people who, you know, it, it's kind of well known at this point that keto or even just low carb is really good for weight loss. And also even for type two diabetes, people are starting to kind of know that this is the best way to go. But what about all the people that have these weird sort of unexplained health problems? Mm -hmm. And they don't know why, because every time they get their blood check, blood sugar checked at the doctor, it's normal. And your A1C is normal. Well, we don't know what's wrong with you. You're not diabetic. See you in six months. And, and, you know, all three of us talk about this all the time. What's going on with insulin when your blood sugar is normal? Mm -hmm. So we have a whole chapter on, on insulin and how that chronically high insulin explains like things like hypertension and gout and PCOS and even migraines and all of these other things, even when you, your, your sort of quote unquote traditional blood work looks normal. Um, and then the other group of people I think is, is kind of like Dr. Westman was talking about, somebody that knows they have health issues, but they're never going to do keto. They're just like, I'm not ever going to do that crazy keto thing. They could read this and, and learn like, oh, I don't have to go to that extreme level. You know, so many of these people will get much, much better just cutting carbs to some extent. Now, they might get even better if they would go all the way. But if they're not going to, maybe they could come off their insulin and come off two medications and maybe they're just still taking metformin. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, they get 80% of the way to where they want to go and they're perfectly happy there. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, should we leave those people behind? Should we say, well, you still want to eat fruit, so you might as well just be sick and we're going to leave you. We don't care. Like, no, like what, what can mm -hmm. we do? to get you in a good direction. Um, yeah, and then, and like Dr. Russman was saying, he wasn't really clear on what he meant by the food quality, but there's all this talk about, you know, your food has to be organic and it has to be grass fed and you can't have the soybean oil in your salad dressing. And those are, again, these sort of peripheral issues that 
are not the, the biochemical way by which this way of eating actually works inside you. And so if you are on a budget, you know, Carol, I'm sure your fans probably know your history. Like not everyone can afford to go to the hoity-toity co-op and pay $20 a pound for steak. Should we leave you behind? Should those people be left to just, well, sorry, you can't afford grass-fed beef. I guess you just have to go blind from diabetes. No, you can eat discount chain food. You can eat, you can go to the fast food drive through and get burger patties and you'll do great as long as you just keep the carbs low. And, you know, I've learned this from many of my patients who who are from all walks of life in Durham, North Carolina. Some eat from the from fast food and restaurants entirely. Some go to the fancy grocery stores and cook their own meals. But so we had to come up with the essence of what would work in all of these different places. And we share that information just as clearly as we can. Oh, it's it's so true. I mean, you guys know my backstories. When I first started this, I was so disabled. I was getting my food at the food bank. And uh, if we get the message out that you don't have to have really expensive food, you can actually do it on any budget. Even if you have no budget, there's a way of making this work. And you get, I don't know, 98% of the benefits just, you know, making that change and eating any quality of food that you can afford. Um, yeah. it's a very important message to get out there. I love that. Yeah. And, and uh, also, I love that you're like this whole book is about being more inclusive. Like, let's bring along everyone, um, no matter where they're at. And um, because our diet mentality is it wants to be black or white, like you're all in or you're binging on junk food. Like, and I love that this book is about like, let's meet people where they're at. And there is an approach that can fit that just improving your diet in general is going to get you a lot of benefits. And so you don't have to be black and white. You don't have to be all or nothing to get a lot of the benefits. So, yeah, I think um, you mentioned something about, you know, the sort of all in or, you know, you're either 20 grams of carbs a day or fewer, or you're, you're face first in a, in a tub of ice cream or something, but something that our book includes too, that I think is missing from the keto world is that, you know, there's a lot of books on food addiction and sugar addiction, and then there's books on keto. There's nothing that really incorporates both until mm -hmm. now. Our book, you know, our book doesn't talk a ton about it, but we do have sections on, you know, food addiction, sugar addiction. Okay, what do you do? Okay, ideally, this is the diet you follow. What if, what happens in that moment when you have that day where I just want a damn donut? What do you do? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you have the donut, okay, get right back on plan immediately after. No big deal, move on. Or maybe instead of the donut, like we have we have a food list, but let's so for example, like a cinnamon roll flavored protein bar is not really part of the food list. But if you're in that like, you know, situation and you can barely hang on, we would prefer that you have a cinnamon roll or um birthday cake flavor protein bar rather than a pint of regular ice cream you know there is a spectrum of like how can we indulge and go to get over that hump with the least sort of metabolic damage ideally you would have a piece of pepperoni instead but okay you're, you're not going to do that you want you want the sweet how can we have the you know the least metabolic damage, so to speak. And I, I don't know a better way to say that, but you know, like we're just, we're, we're being realistic. It's, it's, it's like Dr. Weston says, the holidays are coming up. If you want to enjoy on Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever, he's, I'm going to steal your line. I'm going to steal your thunder, Dr. Westman. He says, okay. don't let a holiday become a hollow week or a hollow month. <laughs> you know, nobody, again, nobody became obese and diabetic from having one piece of pumpkin pie. You know, it, the, the problem is that we eat like it's Thanksgiving 365 days a year. That's the problem, yeah. not the once in a while slice of pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. I stole that from another doctor. <laughs> we all share good lines like that. Because I say it all the time, but I always give you credit. Well, it's really, I got it from Alan Rader, who. And it's actually who, in here. It's in, a, this is our book, everyone. It's actually oh, in ooh. here. Line. It's in here. That's well, cool. that's great. So we, you can cite your source now too, <laughs> officially published source. So, um, so let's talk about, uh, and those of you that are watching this, so, you know, if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, let us know you're watching the replay, but 
if you're somebody who uh, is ready to end your carb confusion, if you're in that place where you're really feeling like, yeah, I'm really confused about what, how many carbs I should I be at zero or should I be at 400? So say yes in the comment section. Let us know uh, that you are <laughs> ready to end your carb confusion. Um, but let's let's talk about. So your first section of the book is how we got here. Um, can we kind of talk about that? Because it, it's been so long now that we've been told that fat's bad for us, salt's bad for us. We should eat six times a day. Uh, people forgot that there was something before that. So how do we get to this point now where um, most of us are going to do better with having some level of carbohydrate restriction? Yeah. So you know, how do you boil down the Good Calories, Bad Calories book by Dick Gary Taubes and yeah. the My Big Fat Diet by Nina Teicholz. And yeah, 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 that one right there. Yeah. But, <laughs> but basically, it's the it was the focus on avoiding fats and fat in the food causes fat in the arteries and fat will raise your cholesterol and the cholesterol causes heart disease and all of that is kind of fading away. It's it's dying sort of a political death, which means we don't we don't talk about it. Nobody comes out and says we were wrong. Uh, and so that's really the, the um, false demonization of fat and cholesterol is how we got here. And the kind of, you know, free access to sugar. Oh, it must be fine if it doesn't have cholesterol, you know, Skittles or you know, these candies that are sugar, pure sugar, but they're good for the heart, you know? No, 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 no. So that shift is called a paradigm shift, though, and it takes time. In fact, it takes you know, maybe half a generation of, of people who were taught a certain way and now uh, uh, no longer are in practice. And the, the younger people grow up familiar with the idea that sugar is bad mm -hmm. and that the sugar and insulin connection and that the, the feeling bad, the roller coaster of sugar and insulin is something that's very real. And you can actually help people by understanding that we tried to communicate it just as quickly as we could. And I just have to say, we don't have a, a reference. We don't have one reference, meaning like a scientific citation. We did that on purpose. Mm. Because this is like solid science. Yeah. You know, who wants to look it up all it's a distraction when you're reading. So that was on purpose that we did you notice we didn't have any scientific reference? Uh I I I that didn't notice that. No. Good. Excellent. <laughs> That's the way we want it. And I was, I'm a little nervous. I'm like, you know, we're, we're going to take a lot of criticism because of that. But I think anytime you write anything about anything, you're going to take criticism. But then I, you know, I had to sort of remind myself, nothing that we say is controversial. We don't need to back anything up because we we don't even like like we were saying before we don't even demonize carbohydrate. We don't say that bread is bad for you. You know, we do, what what is your medical situation? What is your maybe you can have bread and it's fine. Um, so yeah, but it's it was a little odd to write a book and not you know I'm so used to especially as a as a nutritionist and not a doctor I'm so used to feeling like I have to back up everything I say like well this study says or but. So that's that's a little interesting. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to go back and relook again and and notice that there there is not that. But yeah, your knowledge is based on lots of solid research, which is the point that Dr. Weston yeah. was making. You know, yeah. so a, lot people, a lot of people will write a diet book and there's not solid science, and they find these references that are that are it really have no relation to what they're talking about. It's like if there are all these references, they're protesting or, you know, there's that saying that we think they protesteth too much. Yeah. <laughs> Say there are a hundred, you know, there are all these studies. Well, you know, anyway, this is um, the solid science says that, you know, once you get to a certain place, you don't have to be, you know, oh, well, see, there's a paper, you know, there's a paper. I mean, you know, the diet world, as long as there's one person against it, the news media will find them and then suddenly there's controversy, you know? <laughs> so the, this is not really controversial anymore. I think and everyone in your neighborhood is honking in support of uh, ending the carb confusion. There <laughs> Must be. I live, I live just a few miles from him and there's nothing where I live, thank goodness, because okay. I, I can't take the noise, but it's, it's <laughs> where I live. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. so, oh, we this. I was just flipping through this and I was reminded that um, something else that I like about our book is, you know, again, it's so, keto is so known 
known for weight loss, but our book really, there's no, even the cover has nothing about weight. The subtitle and the title say nothing about weight. It says optimal health. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have at the end of each chapter, there's like a, a real life success story of a person that we know that ate this way and reversed all kinds of health issues. And many of them do talk about weight, but it's weight and PCOS or migraines or binge eating or fatty liver or all kinds of other things. And so, and we do have two or three stories from people that were athletic or, you know, lean their whole life, but discovered that, you know, I'm an athlete and I'm not overweight. Oh my God, I'm, I have pre-diabetes. Like how did that happen? Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that's nice too, that it's really not, you know, we, we emphasize that weight is only one aspect of what happens when your metabolism is wonky. Yeah, I love that you guys talk about insulin because um, it, it's good to see it, you know, back when we could still go to uh, conferences and things like that, that people are starting to talk about insulin as the driver for a lot of chronic illness and disease. Um, I enjoyed Dr. Ben Bickman's book that just uh, came out in 2020 as well, which is, you know, why we get sick, talk all about insulin, but you guys address that as well. So can you talk just a little bit, you know, briefly about um, how insulin uh, is the primary driver, why when people lose weight, they all, these other things get better too? Yeah, you know, it's so old that you can't get study funded just to look at insulin. Mm. So it's, one of the, it's so important that, that it's, again, it's not controversial. <laughs> but uh, it's not, uh, the problem is most doctors don't measure insulin. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're left with measuring glucose or which uh, the, the sugar, so if the blood sugar or glucose goes up, the insulin goes up and, and to keep the blood sugar down. But insulin tells your body to make fat, store fat, and is also pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So the whole another side of doing a low carb diet is the anti-inflammatory effects that you get by lowering the insulin levels. And, you know, we don't go a deep dive into it, don't worry, it's not too too technical, but it's important to mention that. And uh, as um, many people are pointing out, including Ben Bickman, the full picture can't just be seen by measuring the blood glucose. Mm -hmm. You really need the blood glucose and the blood insulin. And back in the old days, you would actually give some sugar and check the blood glucose and the insulin over a three or four hour period to see how your body responds to the blood sugar. Very few doctors do that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I don't do that because it's not gonna change what I do. But if you really wanted more information about glucose and insulin, you'd do more extensive testing. But it's important to know that it's not just about the blood sugar or blood glucose. And I've had my clients almost fighting with their doctor, just please let me get my insulin tested. Yeah. They don't even uh, know what to do with it too. But actually it was my last interview with Amy that she told me about directlabs.com. Uh, and so now I've been able to help them, empower them to be able to just order their own labs. And, and interestingly, my clients are saying, this is cheaper than my copay through my insurance to get this Jeez, done. Yeah, last time I checked, it was $34 for a fasting insulin from, from uh, 26 out uh, west, west oh. of the country so oh yeah, yeah. and if, um, unfortunately i think if you're in like new york new jersey and maybe rhode island there's a couple of states where it's not legal to to order your own stuff but most uh, of them okay which hmm. is yeah yeah so thank you for that that uh that ref that yeah for a yeah i do i send people there all the time for the i i always talk about thyroid panels a lot of doctors don't want to do the full thyroid mm -hmm. panel Even there it's not it's it's worth every penny and it's not really that expensive <laughs> mm. the insulin um story is, is really just getting out you know ben dr bickman's book is going to help a lot um and it's just not in the current way of thinking of most doctors, even even internists, um, even endocrinologists. So you may have to take you know matters into your own hands with 50 bucks, 35, 20 bucks, and check some of these on your own. And fortunately, you know, we explain a little bit about, uh, we don't get into the levels and, and the, uh, you know, um, all that detail, but just the general knowledge that you want to keep the insulin as low as possible. Now that is getting more traction in, the deep research world, like the 
the, if you study mice and all that, and, and it's known as a fasting mimicking diet, actually, mm. where you don't eat much for a while and your insulin goes way down, and you get all those benefits. And that happens on a keto low carb diet too. It really is a, it's a fasting type of diet with, so you get the benefits of fasting, the fat burning and metabolism while you're still eating food. But that's a hard thing to, you know, oh, no, that's fasting. No, no it, fasting is fat burning. And and that happens when you're actually eating protein and a very low amount of carbs. So um, if you if you hear, you know, fasting has this benefit and that benefit, you're actually getting that benefit on a keto diet. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me of a, uh, a fun question. I get this all the time is, um, what can I eat or drink and still be fasting? <laughs> what can I eat while I'm fasting? Yeah. yeah. What can I do to be awake while I'm sleeping? <laughs> okay, well, the common <laughs> question is, can you have... Wait, how are you? Are you awake or are you asleep? Are you eating or are you fasting? No, it's right, it's a fair so. question though. And I don't, I don't think we address that in the book. We, because we have an FAQ and, and we do address, you know, is fasting required? And of course the answer is no, but it, depends on how you define fasting. If you're just skipping a meal or eating only once or twice a day because you're only hungry once or twice a day, to me, that's not fasting. That's just eating normally because you eat when you're hungry and when you're not hungry, you, you don't eat just because, oh, it's breakfast time, I should eat. Um, but yeah, with I mean, the whole goal of fasting from a metabolic point of view, I'm not talking about like a serious medical issue that maybe somebody is using fasting medically supervised but just metabolically speaking, in my opinion, the main point of fasting is to get your blood sugar down and keep it nice and low, get your insulin down, keep it nice and low. And like Dr. Russman was saying, if you do keto the right way, that happens on keto anyway. And um, but 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 with that in mind, you know, you, you can drink coffee. And in, in my opinion, you can drink coffee and still consider yourself fasted, even if you're putting a little splash of cream or, you know, even if some people want to push a meal an extra two or three hours later rather than, you know, eat at their normal meal time or whatever, I do think you can eat like half an ounce of walnuts or an ounce of macadamia nuts, something that is basically zero carb and close to zero protein, something that's almost pure fat. If like, cause I've done this, if I'm, if for psychological reasons, if I want to fast for a day or two, just to see if I can do it, I will do that. And I'll consider myself still in a fasted state because metabolically speaking, an ounce or half an ounce of walnuts or macadamia nuts is going to do nothing to your blood sugar and insulin. And that's, to me, that's what you want to do with fasting. You want to stay in that state. And that kind of stuff is not going to push you out, I don't think. So coffee, yeah, so tea, the, water, you know. So the problem comes in in the practical reality that some people can't limit themselves to that much. Well, of course, yeah. And of course, these are people who come to my clinics. <laughs> so that if, if you have a difficult time of moderating any of these things, the easiest teaching is to say, don't have it. But then it becomes too depriving. Mm. So I, I can see why a lot of people say, no, you can't. But then it keeps people away from it. And then we try to teach, well, it's the metabolic state that you're in and a little bit won't interfere with that. But when I have the little bit of cream, it turns into a lot of bit of cream. Well, well then, okay, so you can't have that. You right, so you have to know yourself, you know, yeah. Those are the, the trigger food concepts. It's interesting that um, uh, nuts and cream and oils and and uh, even pork rinds in my area, these, these puffed up big skins become uh, trigger foods and people can't stop. Mm. And you just have to be aware that that's, Pretty much a universal thing. We all have our, our trigger foods and buttons that you just got to stay away from those things for a while. I, I, I myself recently, little personal confession here, I had to move. I don't know if you've ever heard of this concept of green light, yellow light, and red light foods. Mm. You know, green light food is something you have no problem with. You can eat it, it's fine. A red light food is a food that you know is a trigger food. Like, some people will spend, well, you know, nut butter or something like, I can't have just one spoonful, I'm gonna have the whole jar, so that's a red light food for you. Pork rinds for me, 
used to be a green light food. Now they're a red light food and there was no passing through yellow because <laughs> my serving is the bag. Whether that's the little snack size bag or the family size bag, my serving is the bag. So <laughs> now my serving is zero. It's no, no four fines ever. <laughs> so, so someone reads the book. We actually have like three specific phases or categories or whatever you, what we call it, phase one, phase two, and phase three. But so I think um, of all of the things I have, this is unique in that all of the books we've read and, and um, because we've been positioned in the keto world, we're not afraid of saying, yeah, you can do keto forever. I mean, here are the things you need to watch out for. And yeah, you can have some carbs forever. I mean, so what we're trying to do is help with the practical reality of what carbs you can eat, what carb levels, but also the day-to-day -day things we've learned from working with people with keto and um, uh, these practical things often are what, you know, the little de devils in the details, they say. And, mm -hmm. and often, um, you know, as you know, you coach someone, you get to know what they're having, you get a sense for, uh, okay, uh, there's a certain domain of, okay, this is a pasta, bread sort of thing. And, you know, have you heard of chaffles? You know, the mm -hmm. chaffle is the greatest bread su substitute or substitution, you know, um, it came on the keto world maybe 18, 20 months ago or, or so. Uh, I was even, I was interviewed for um, Women's World. They did an article on oh. the cheese and egg waffle. Um, You've never had a chaffle, Kara? Oh, no, I have. I just, that you got interviewed for Women's World for chaffles is just funny to me. So, no, it's it's amazing because it's like cheese and eggs make a waffle. Like, it, it's yeah. when you see the mixture together, you're like, that's not going to be. And it's like, oh, my gosh, how's that happen? It's magic in the in the little waffle iron. So, uh, I, uh, I, so I love that you guys are, you're looking at individual carb tolerance from two different ways. So, one is a metabolic place. We, uh, you have a different carb tolerance um, depending on where you are metabolically, and that can change over your lifetime. But as uh, Amy's been talking about, and Dr. Westman too, uh, that there's also the psychological, knowing yourself, right? Like the, the red light, yellow light, green light foods. Uh, there may be some foods that just don't work for you personally, even though other carbs may work for you too. So I love that you're addressing, addressing that. It's not that here's the one size fits all diet for every single person. Here's the food you're going to eat and here's the food you're not going to eat. And there you go. <laughs> right. And even, yeah. even the keto foods, like we were just saying, you know, there's a reason not, you know, on Dr. Westman's famous page four, that's page four diet. That's what our phase one is in end your carb confusion. There's a reason nuts and seeds aren't allowed. And it's not that they're not suitable for keto. They are. It's just that it's like the number one most common trigger food or binge food. You know, you get, I always joke, you get that bag from Trader Joe's and you sit down on the couch and before you know it, the, half the bag is gone. How did that happen? Oh my God. And so, you know, if, if you are the rare person that can have the one ounce of almonds and put the bag away, have the almonds. But, and, and same thing with cheese. Cheese is limited for the same reason. Cheese is just really, it's its perfectly fine for low carb or keto. It's just so easy to overdo, you know? So yeah, even it's its not just, so it's not just like the, the high carb foods that we have to watch out for. You just have to know for you. And, and because there are people that can have one little square of cheese and put the block away. So just, you have to know where you fall on that spectrum. Yeah. I remember, uh, Dr. Westman in Austin, Texas, and this probably was about three years ago, I'm going to guess, where you, uh, you know, after the conference, you're just kind of talking about like the things that people crave and clinically that you've noticed, like whatever, when somebody says, I crave bread. And then when you question them, uh, well, what are you eating? Do you want to share a little bit about your... Uh, uh, no, it's a, you want me to give away all my secrets? Is that it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, you know, ask me if I crave fruit. Do you crave fruit, Dr. Westman? No, I don't eat fruit. You know, oh, of course, there's that initial, you don't eat fruit. Well, no, I've done this 20 years. It doesn't tug at me anymore. But then, you know, do you, Amy, do you crave cigarettes? I don't smoke. No, because you don't smoke. That's right. So, so if someone comes in and says, I ask, you know, are you having hunger? Yes. Oh, well, what are you craving? 
No bread. I know they're eating bread <laughs> because you don't crave it if you don't eat it. So, but so at first I, I don't really, you know, I'm always supportive. I mean, that's a big part of what we do. And I have to say the book is written, thank you, Amy, in a way that's very supportive. And if anything, we go, you know, bend over backwards to help solve this problem, which is, you know, really a, a difficult one for so many people. But yeah, so if you're craving something, it means you're having it. Yes. <laughs> or you've recently had it. <laughs> yeah, you've recently had it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, so another part of the book, um, well, okay, so I'll get to that in a second, but um, you've got a questionnaire in there that you that helps you find your carb threshold. Because like you said, you've got the three different phases that are um, different carb uh, recommendations for those phases. And so how did this, um, you know, the questionnaire that you have in your book, how did that come to be? Um, can you share a little bit of like some of the highlights of how somebody would know maybe where they fall? Yeah, so the big um, theme here is trying to keep things simple. So we don't go into your, what's your blood test level and all that. We we have it into categories and of syndromes or symptoms so that you can take this simple checklist and you'll see how many are in each column. And then that puts you into one of three categories in terms of carb tolerance or, or how many carbs you should have to begin with. And it, it works pretty well. I mean, so we've studied low glycemic diets. We've studied actually higher carb, low fat diets, and we've studied keto diets. And people kind of sort out into these three different categories. Uh, and we tried to make it easy with, you know, if you have uh, a medical thing like diabetes, high blood pressure, PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, you'd fall into the, you know, you probably should do keto and, you know, the therapeutic level of carb restriction or low carb diets. But if you're, you know, like my brother who has only had 20 pounds to lose and he's never had a problem with weight and he's, you know, 60, then he falls into the, the phase three where he could eat more carbs and can still get the benefit of avoiding sugar in a big way, which is a theme of the book. So we've got a question from Robin. She's up in Canada and wondering, uh, when is the book going to be available in general? And is there is that different than when it will be available in Canada? Oh, and the book, uh, Robin, the book is called End Your Carb Confusion. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And your carb confusion. I th we have friends in Canada that have already ordered it. So you should, yeah. you might be able to find it um, on Amazon in Canada already. Okay. Um, and and anyone that's interested, please do consider pre-ordering because our um, publisher tells us that the pr all the pre-orders count toward the first week sales. And those initial sales are critical to potentially, potentially hitting some kind of bestseller list or something. But it's called End Your Carb Confusion. And yeah, you're Release date is December 15. Yes, totally forgot yeah. that part, thank but you. That's when it'll be mailed if you pre-order it, right? Yeah. So the release, oh, yeah. date, the release date, at least in the US, is December 15th. I'm not sure if it's the same in Canada, but it's it's available for pre-order in Canada right now. Um, and that, that checklist Dr. Webster was talking about, you know, I don't, let's not lie to people. Most people will be pointed toward the keto level, at least to start with. But then we also, you know, there's a whole section on how to gradually transition if if it's appropriate for you and when it's appropriate how do i start incorporating more of those carbs like and and even the the highest level our level three is i think 150 grams of carbs a day which sounds like a lot to those of us that do very very low carb or keto but 150 grams of carbs is still um it's lower than most people are eating but let's say you have you know a big potato is maybe 50 grams a big potato that still gives you 100 grams of carbs to play with 100 grams of carbs buys you a lot of eggplant and zucchini and <laughs> blueberries and even even shh, like a little bit of rice or a little bit of beans like at that level when you're active and healthy and lean but it's still carbohydrate controlled we would say you know it's not you can't go to town on every sugar and starch in sight but it's um 
so the, the the mindset is always on on your carbohydrate tolerance but that that higher level is is more generous and it you'll you'll find on that checklist it just depends on what your health issues are that you know where you should start and, yeah. and here's the thing too we we make a point of saying that even if you're filling out the checklist and it says hey guess what you could start at level three like you don't need to go that low carb we encourage everyone to start at the keto level because you know all three of us know that when you are actually in ketosis you might feel and experience things that you don't get with more carbs even if you're healthy and you're fit and lean some people just find they have sharper thinking their mood is better um acid reflux like so even if you have a higher carb tolerance we kind of like want you to start at the low level just to see what happens and you might have little weird things that you don't even realize you have till they're gone like hey wait my my knee doesn't hurt anymore my knee usually hurts when it's gonna rain or like hey i haven't had a, um, a headache in three weeks like whatever it is that's um so it's, so it's helpful to start at the low level but you don't have to if you don't want to wonderful and uh the last thing about the i mean there's tons to love about the book but the last thing i love about the book is appendix a um which is all about how to actually get uh medical care of people you know doctors nurses practitioners in general that are supportive of lowering carbs <laughs> the big category of lower carb and or keto so i love that you have that section in there actually i uh last interview I did was with Dr. Jeffrey Gerber. And I talked to him about that because that's an ongoing thing with a lot of my clients is how, you know, my doctor thinks keto is going to kill me. Uh, how do I find somebody? How do I get the right kind of care? So I love that you have that in there. Do uh, we both speak to speak about how, how to help people find support for their choice of doing a keto low carb approach? Yeah. You know, and it's important to know the, the barriers for safe use. Mm -hmm. So this is therapeutic and you know, I take people off drugs. I, I take them off 10 drugs over time. I mean, I might have to reduce a drug on the first day. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that the diet is bad and harmful. It's the drugs can become too harmful. So we make a, a strong, you know, urge you to, if you have medical problems to get uh, advice and and we don't just say yeah, just find your doctor we have now lists of places and, and a growing number of doctors who are keto friendly it's called <laughs> but um the important thing is yeah if your doctor is not supportive it's like they're, they're they just haven't kept up with the research and, and literature and you know we're working hard to teach as many people as we can but it's a slow process but I will say it's really encouraging that I know, um, you know, Dr. Westman's clinic is is here in Durham, North Carolina, but you've had people come from overseas, like doctors from other countries come to visit your clinic, right, to learn what you do. I mean, that's encouraging that this is happening, but probably, unfortunately, more people from overseas than even from the U.S., but I know, like, people flock to your clinic to learn about this, so it's more and more doctors and nurse practitioners also sort of allied health professionals are, are coming to it, but it's it's still small, but it is it is growing. Well, that was another reason for the book is the inordinate waiting time to come to see a doctor like me in the clinic. And, and then that means you don't have access to the information if you have to wait to see me in a clinic and get my handouts. So we're trying to treat just as many people, inform as many people as we can and that is one reason for the book to eliminate confusion get the information to more people and to keep things simple here's a uh i don't know if you've heard him say it or not but um here's dr gerber's fun little phrase that he recommends that you know if your doctor freaks out about keto just say you're doing a low carb mediterranean diet yeah, and they usually go oh that sounds wonderful well, that's healthy <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no one. I I've told my clients, just say that you cut out sugar and and refined mm -hmm. carbs. Like no no medical professional can argue with that. <laughs> You're not to say I'm pouring MCT oil into my coffee and I'm eating like ribeye with butt. Like you don't have to say that part. Don't don't <laughs> take the quiet part out loud, as they yeah. say. You have to say 
I don't eat like I'm just eating better. I'm eating whole real food and who's going to argue with that? <laughs> right. Right. Because there's the, con the preconceived notion of what keto looks like, but then you actually look like a plate of food, like the meal plan suggestions, ideas that you have in the book are all like, if you saw that plated, you're like, that just looks like a healthy plate of food. It yeah. doesn't look like some crazy, crazy diet. Right. Yeah, I remember some years ago, I was giving my first research poster. I won't say how many years it was, but there was a, a young researcher with the same kind of data um, and same doing the keto diet study. And, and I said, you know, aren't you worried about the, the diet? And he looked at me and he said, you know, doc, it's just food. I'm not going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> Because we come in with all of these oh, false prejudices, really. And uh, I've heard the same criticisms for 20 years now that haven't been, they're unfounded criticisms. Yeah, I, I've had the same thing where, uh, you know, mom clients of mine, they're like, ooh, it, do you think it's okay if my, my kid really likes this food? Is it, oh, is it safe for them to eat it too? And I said, meat and vegetables? Like, do you, is, is that okay for a kid to eat? And they're like, Oh, well, when you put it that way, like, this is, this is why I like, you know, we all know Ken Berry, Ken Berry calls it the proper human diet. Yeah. That people say, is it safe for my kid? Can my child eat the proper human diet? <laughs> my husband's in the military. Can the troops eat the proper human diet? Like when you phrase it like that, well, what, you know, and, and you know, what kills me? No pun intended. No one asks, is it safe for my child to eat a bowl of sugary cereal with a glass of liquid sugar, orange juice, and then a, a fat-free bran muffin, which is nothing but sugar? Mm. Nobody asks if that's safe, but mm. is, it, is it safe for my child to eat a chicken thigh with roasted broccoli? It's like, a butter how on. did we get to this point? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy world that we're mm. in. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this has been so much fun. I love having you guys in chat and I miss seeing you guys in person too. But yeah. uh, just in wrapping this up, um, you know, what, what, you know, last points that you want to make about uh, the book or keto in general or optimal health or anything like what, throw something at me. <laughs> yeah, well, it's really exciting to see the keto take off and help so many people. And we actually have another venue. It's a Adapt Your Life Academy, which is a the first master class we're doing is a keto made simple mm. master class with videos that I did. And if you want to, you know, deeper dive into how we got here and learn about the grassroots movement, and it's uh, we're going to roll that out in just a few weeks. So in in November, so mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, different ways of teaching this, and that's really my goal is to get this information to as many people as possible in different ways. Excellent. Yeah, for, for me, I would just say, I think one of the biggest selling points of the book is that it's very, it's written in plain English. This is not, you're, you're not going to need the book and then also a dictionary side by side. Like you, this is very easy to understand. It's not some, you don't need a PhD to get through it. It's very plain language. And um, I, I tried to make it that way anyway. That's, that's, I think it's plain language. Well, that's, uh, we think yeah. I mean, many talents, Amy is writing in a way that's very engaging and makes you want to just keep turning pages. So, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you both for being here. Amy Berger, Dr. Eric Westman. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm so excited. Congrats on your new book coming out and, uh, um, just adding to your list of amazing, wonderful things, information that you put out there in the world and helping change the health of this world. We've, we've got the ship going in the wrong direction in the last 60 years and we got to turn it around 180 degrees. And so it takes time. So I'm glad you're out there doing, doing the hard work. Well, thank, oh, you. thank you. Thanks for having us, Carol. Always good to see you. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. If you've enjoyed this, uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, say, give us a comment of your, uh, your aha, your takeaway during this interview. So thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.